we have with us today, uh, Coach Sterling, the girls' uh, Bridge City basketball coach. Thank you for taking some time out uh, to talk to us. I know you're in the middle of a tournament, which, by the way, how is the girl? How are the girls doing in today's tournament? Hey, they're, they're playing right now, matter of fact. Uh, they, they have a lead at halftime. They played two games yesterday and, and lost by a possession in both games. Lost by one by two and, and a buzzer beater by three uh, yesterday. But it's uh, – say we're a young program. Um uh, they're competing. We're kind of uh, kind of trying to build in the future this first year. So uh, I'm excited about what we have and the girls we have in, in the program. And uh, they're, they're doing a good job so far. Okay, so we'll get back to the girls in just a second. But before we delve into that, tell me a little bit about your background as a coach. How? Uh... This is uh, year 17 for me overall. Um, I didn't start uh, – coaching right away out, out of college uh there's something that kind of i've had friends who played basketball my entire life uh through through men's leagues and high school and, and so forth and got the opportunity uh, a friend of mine had gotten the biter job when coach english had moved from biter to Nederland. a guy that i played with in high school took over at biter and and, and kind of convinced me that you know hey you know that's your passion that you that's what you love doing and he was right so I made the jump uh, into the into the high school basketball uh, back in 2005, I believe. It, it's been a while. Um, so that was my first experience. I was a biter for nine years, uh, five as assistant, four as a head coach. Then to, on to Bridge City. Uh, I was a head coach at Bridge City on the boys' side for three years. I've been at Nederland the last four years as a varsity assistant for Coach English over there. Uh, we've had – Good success. Though we had some success on the boys' side uh, when I was at Bridge City, went to playoffs two out of three years. Uh, obviously, Nederland, uh, he's had a lot of success there. We went three rounds deep last year and made the, you know made the playoffs last. I think he's made the playoffs last seventeen in Nederland. So, um, got to learn a lot from different guys along the way, some different head coaches, and uh, kind of mold what uh, my own, my own personal philosophy is. And I feel like now I'm just as passionate about the game, but a lot more experience. So. Uh, we're looking forward to trying to build this program overall, not not just the varsity, but our middle school programs, our little dribblers program, and, and so forth. Okay, so if a girl from the younger grades, the middle school, or maybe even like, you know, maybe like one that's like getting into little dribbler, I can't speak today, little dribblers, if they were to say to you, Coach, when I get to high school, I want to be part of the Cardinals, the Lady Cardinals basketball team. What would you tell her that she needed to be focusing on now to be a success when she got to you? Well, I mean, the key, the big thing for me is is being visible in the in the little dribbler program, so we can build those relationships when they're young. So um, hopefully, by the time they get to middle school, they already already know the kids by then. Um, and and the biggest thing is fundamentals. Something we try to stress with our uh, our little dribbler coach as well. The, you know, it takes a lot. Uh, it, needs, it takes a lot of parents to volunteer to make that stuff a success. But we try to stress to really, really teach them shooting, form, uh, ball handling, uh, all that, all the team aspect of it. But really, it's fundamentals. You know, we get to the high school level. It really comes down to who can dribble, pass, and shoot. Uh, that's that's if you got five girls who can do that, dribble, pass, and shoot, then uh, you have a chance to be real successful. And to build off of that question, if uh, you had a girl who had made it to the high school level, made it to the team and came to you and says, coach, you know, I feel a passion for the sport and I could see myself coaching at one particular point. What kind of advice would you give her going forward as she looked off into a career in, uh, as a coach? Well, uh, obviously, you really have to love it. I mean, you can't be in this for uh, you're not going to get rich uh, being a high school basketball coach, but. It's, it's something that is very rewarding. I mean, there's, there's a lot of positives. Uh, you can make an impact on a lot, a lot of young people's lives. Um, you can see them grow and develop and, and watch their confidence uh, build along the way. So, you know, I, I would always encourage, hey, if that's is a passion you have, follow that passion. We'll, we'll help all our kids along the way as far as, like, you know, after high school, whatever their passion is, we want to help see them succeed so they can come back in our program and be examples to the ones that are coming through at that time. So, you know, obviously we we support whatever passion they have inside of basketball or outside. And talking about passion, is there like when you look back at your coaching career and your basketball playing days, is there like a game or just a point that just like sticks out in your mind as like a fond memory, just something that you know you 
uh, you enjoy thinking about? Well, uh, uh, yeah, you look you look back and, and talk about when you play in high school, trust yourself, those girls, say, hey, if you're on the fence about playing, uh, you only get to experience one time in high school. You know, to play with your friends and play and play in front of your family uh, on the same gym. You know, it's a different experience in college. But I remember playing in high school and Lincoln Bubble Bees were uh, a perennial state champion and, and one of the best. They're coming off a state championship in our senior year. We're able to beat them at home. That was that was uh, quite the experience and watching the you know the crowd go crazy and rush the court and all that, and all that fun stuff. Um, so those experiences are what you kind of remember forever. Uh, the big games and, and the big moments. Um, I want our kids to be able to, you know, to experience those same things, but they, they got to realize too that you know, it takes a lot of hard work. It's not about showing up that night. It's all the work you put in to, to get to that moment. So that's something we're stressed with them. Hey, you know, we're going to make it fun and positive, but we're also going to work you hard and be disciplined. So, you know, it's finding that balance, you know, making, you know, making players that are, uh, that are confident and also, uh, aggressive and, 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 Play that plays without making, you know, without worrying about making mistakes. You want them to go out there and, and, and play through stuff, and, but to play confidently, not, you know, don't worry about the, the negatives, just, just focus on the positives. And on that note, you said that you're building a pretty, that you've got a pretty young team and you're building a program for not just this season, but future seasons. Uh, yeah. How do you, uh, f- how do you feel about your, uh, your team this season? Well, you know, uh, we've had some. There's some other programs here at Bridge City that have been very successful. Our girls' volleyball team just got out of the third round of the playoffs. Uh, I have several girls that are coming from volleyball that just uh, got here this week. So it's almost kind of like starting fresh again. You know, we have uh, five freshmen that will probably see varsity time for us, um, along with five seniors and a mix of some sophomores and juniors. So it, it's a unique mix of kids that we're trying to uh, show that, hey, this is our culture. This is, this is what we value. These are our standards. Um, and so they're learning our system. It's not really so much don't focus on the scoreboard. That's why my, my focus is are we doing things right? You know, are we, uh, are we coachable? Are we making eye contact with the coaches? Are we supporting each other? You know what I mean? Are, are, are we playing up to our, uh, our standards as far as energy level on defense and stuff like that? And the, the, the scoreboard, you know, take care of itself. We're doing things right. Let's see if I remember correctly. December 9th is your oh, is your first district game. Uh, but are there some games this season that you're kind of excited about that you just, you know, like you think will be like defining moment games or just games you're excited about playing? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with the new team. We're, we're excited about uh, every game on the schedule. Next Tuesday, where it's being passed, that's an opportunity for us to, to with these new volleyball uh, kids that came, that came over from, from volleyball. And, and we have a what we consider our, our whole team now to uh, get out there and play a lot of kids and they'll get a chance for us to be aggressive defensively. Um, the amount of kids we get, we're able to play. Uh, so we're excited about next Tuesday night. Obviously when district gets here, uh, we're in a strong district for basketball. Uh, Sills we've been, uh, is a perennial uh, district. I think they're a district champion last year. LCM as well. So they got a really strong program right now. Lumberton's traditionally a strong program. Jasper's uh, I think one district two of the last three years. Uh, from the district they're coming from into our into our district now, so there's a lot of good programs uh, in our in our girls district. Uh, we're we're excited. You know, we know every game is going to be a battle, but we're looking forward. To, we feel like we have a team that can be very competitive in that district, and uh, we just got to show up. To, you know, every night ready to play. If you could like offer like ways that they could support the girls uh, basketball teams just a little bit stronger, what would be some things that you would ask them? Well, I, w- I would say this, the, like as far as our uh, our tournament right now in our under level tournament, the parents have been uh, real active in, in helping us run this tournament. Uh, at the moment, they've been great. So uh, our, our little little dribblers program has grown and grown due to parent involvement. So I think the the, the parents have been great. Now it's up for us to, to to get them going. It's up to me as a coach to make sure our, our program as a whole uh, grows and gets better. I think and I think they'll continue to support us. Um, you know, I think when they see our style of play and, and the energy we play with, that it'll start attracting more and more people to our games. Now, I have a couple, like, interesting questions, more personal basketball questions. Uh, I've asked both of these questions of all of the uh, basketball coaches I've asked, and uh, I've got some pretty interesting answers. <laughs> like you said, as a coach, you got to have a passion for the game you're coaching. Otherwise, it just doesn't quite work out. So 
Do you as a coach have a favorite NBA team? Well, yeah. I grew up in a household where, uh, hey, you either rooted for the team your dad rooting for or you went outside. So, uh, <laughs> the Houston Rockets were the local team. We have some fond memories of Akeem, Akeem the Dream, Olajuwon, and, and those 90s teams that were uh, won a couple championships. Mm. I was able actually able to go to game seven, the Houston Rockets in, in, in New York Knicks' first championship game. So that, that was a great experience for me uh, uh, with, with the neighbor and the neighbors able to get us tickets to that thing. So uh, that was that was a great experience. We grew up a huge Rockets fan. Um, also grew up a, a huge Larry Bird fan. So we still watch some of his old videos and some of the highlight reels and, and the great stories they had about Larry Bird and, you know, how we, he would tell the other team, I am about to get it here and score on you like this. And then he'd go out there and do it. So I, I miss some of the old basketball stuff. You know, the games change a lot, but uh, – it's still great. You saw a great player today as well. It's fun watching Seth Curry and those guys who can really shoot the basketball. And uh, this has been like a question. I actually saw this question on Facebook a few weeks ago. I saw that it got a lot of argument in the basketball circles. I've asked uh, a few of the other local head basketball coaches this question as well. And so I'll put the same one to you. LeBron or Jordan? Michael Jordan is no question for me. <laughs> I mean, six for six in the NBA Finals. Uh, the leading scorer, I don't know how many years. Uh, also, all first team all uh, defensive player of the year. Uh, I mean, I don't know, nine times, you know, first team all defense. I uh, think he kept, led the league in steals, uh, you know, a bunch of years as well, too. Uh, to me, you know, it's, it's a different era. It's hard to compare di uh, uh, players from different eras. Obviously, that was more my era watching uh, Michael Jordan come through in his prime. Um, you know, that, that was some special moments, too, watching, watching that, you know, watching him do what he did. Uh, you know, back then, too, I think you watched guys play for one team for the majority of their career. So it was, was kind of easier to kind of get associated with uh, certain players and certain teams back then. Uh, you know, they're, they're more – they move around a whole lot more nowadays. So just to be think they're, you know, going one or two years here and then the contract's up and they're somewhere else. So, so it's a different era. But uh, I mean, obviously LeBron's a great player, too, but I would go Jordan. Well, Coach, I know that you have to get back to uh... – your girls, uh, halftime's probably – they're probably already back on the on the, uh, the court. I wish you the best of luck with that game. And, of course, we'll definitely here be rooting for Br the Bridge City girls in all their games. You are more than welcome to come back on any time that you want to talk about the girls. And I'll even extend this interview. I would love the opportunity to interview any of your girls who are interested in it as, as well because, one, you know, I mean – it's all up at the end of the day. It's all about supporting these girls to develop, to become uh, positive contributors to society. And plus in the same thing, it's a little bit of a selfish thing on my part. If one of these girls make it to the WNBA, I want to be able to say <laughs> I got her first television interview, but uh, no, that's one Coach, of our goals too, is like we want to see some girls get to the, to the next level. Um, you know, I'm not sure we're ready for the WNBA yet, but we'd love to see some girls sign some college scholarships and we're going to make that happen. Okay, well, Coach, uh, this has uh, been a very fun interview. I've really, really enjoyed it, and I can't wait till our next chance to visit, and hopefully soon that will be in person. That would be great. Well, I, I appreciate it.